say I've got more than a big surprise for you. Because I know, I know what you're at. And it's, it's, I feel awfully deeply saddened by this, but you don't work as a temporary secretary. I know for a fact that you actually, you're an undercover journalist and you've robbed somebody of coming on a proper blind date. In January of 1998, a long-awaited episode of Blind Date was aired to an eager and waiting public. Sandwiched between the last heat of a Gladiators mini-tournament known as the Springbok Challenge and the film Last Action Hero, this Blind Date episode was touted as a sensational edition of the popular dating game show. Sensational not only because one half of one of the lucky couples pulled out at the last minute, no double entendre intended, leaving David, the other half, to go on holiday all by himself, but also due to an undercover journalist having infiltrated the show. Well, don't you feel a little bit, the least bit guilty? I mean, there's lots of, I'm sure there's lots of girls in our audience tonight, and certainly millions of girls watching at home, who would have given their right arm to be sitting on the show. And you cheated one of those lovely girls out of a proper blind date. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Nicola Gill picked out Paul Mankello ahead of two other guys on the show and the couple were sent on a trip to the Isle of Skye. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Floddy Hotel. Thank you. My name's Boyd. Hi, Boyd. I'm Paul. Let's come in. Can I take your bag for you? Thank you very much. Thank you. They went on bike rides together, visited a distillery there, took a boat ride to see the seals and seemingly... Had a really nice time together. Look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, hello. Hello. Well, they were certainly flying high on their date, but as far as love was concerned, was the sky the limit? Well, Mr 90s haircut here was certainly enamoured with Nicola, although she seemingly wasn't all that fussed about him. When the screen went back, I thought that uh, Paul probably wasn't the man of my dreams, but he looked really nice and I thought I could definitely get on with him. When the screen first went back and I saw Nicola, she was very much what I'd expected and I was very pleased and she had lovely sparkly green eyes which was really nice. Paul's had a lot of girlfriends, I know, because he told me, so I think if I'd made a move on him I'm probably he would have said yes. I'm normally very quick to judge whether I fancy a girl or not and I certainly did that with Nicola and decided that I didn't. But Maybe I'm too quick with these things. Maybe I should give it just a little bit longer. Because at the end of the day, I'm still single. So, who knows? If I see Nicola a few more times, and we spend more time together, you never know what could happen. So whilst the two had a good time, it doesn't seem like there will be a blind date wedding to look forward to for this pair. So there's absolutely no romance between you whatsoever? I, th I think the world of Nicola. Yes. And she's probably one of my closest friends now. But I'd have to say that, well, she was, she was before the film anyway. Um, I have to say that she's probably the kind of girl that I'd prefer to have a pillow fight with rather than a candlelit dinner. <laughs> well, perhaps he wasn't an, uh, spontaneous enough for you, Nicola, is that right? Well, you do like... yeah, I do. I'm the kind of person who likes surprises. Funny you should say that, Nicola. There's a hell of a surprise coming up in a minute. The public were expecting the show to be on the scandalous side, especially since journalist Esther McCarthy had already laid out the sordid details. Headlined, I bonked blind date cheat, the article was a kiss and tell from Paul, the unwitting pawn in the undercover journalist's game. Cosmopolitan writer Nicola Gill hit headlines earlier this month when she became the first journalist in the history of blind date to bluff her way onto the top show as a contestant. She pretended that she was a temp, and the sting, detailing many of the secrets behind the show, infuriated blind date bosses and gave Nicola instant fame and notoriety. But now it's Nicola's turn to be stung, for the man she picked on the show has kissed and told, and claims that they had a passionate three-month affair, even though Nicola is engaged to her long-term boyfriend. The revelations about their sexual relationship was made by heartbroken blind date contestant Paul Mankello, who fell for Nicola when they went on their date to Scotland. Now, the 27-year-old blonde from London has got some explaining to do to John, her fiancé, and millions of viewers of the ITV show will see her caught red-handed by Scylla, who discovered she was a journalist just before the programme was recorded, when it's aired in January. Writing in the current issue of Cosmopolitan, Nicola says, Being forced to spend so much time with a stranger in a situation where everyone wants you to fancy one another is strange. We spent the flight doing a magazine quiz with me asking him extremely intimate questions about his sex life. 
turns out he's a red-hot lover with a touching romantic streak. I can't help wondering what I'd think of him if we were really on a blind date. But, according to Paul, Nicola found out because he says they slept together and continued to have a relationship when they returned home. We were flirting discreetly with each other and I sensed that Nicola was interested in me, said Paul, who knew she had a boyfriend but didn't know she was engaged to be married. I leant forward and kissed her. I knew I was making a big mistake because she was already attached, but she didn't seem to mind, so I kissed her again, this time for a little longer. Nicola never raised any objection. We eventually went upstairs to her room and lay on the bed, kissing and petting. It soon got to the stage where a decision had to be made as to whether we were going any further, and I told her the choice was entirely hers. She, after all, had the boyfriend, whereas I had no attachments. I went to my room for ten minutes to give us both a chance to think, and then, when I returned to Nicola, she said, Before anything happens, I'd better tell you that I'm a journalist from Cosmopolitan magazine. I thought she was having me on, and to be honest, at the precise moment her occupation wasn't uppermost in my mind. We kissed again, and as one thing led to another, we ended up in bed. I had taken condoms with me because it was in the back of my mind that there was a slim chance I might need them. But when I brought them out, Nicola said, It's very sweet of you to offer, but I don't like using them. Later, Paul said, Nicola told him that her boyfriend was actually her fiancé. I knew what we were doing was wrong, but I tried to put the guilt out of my mind because of the attraction. In the newspaper The Bray People, in January 1998, there was a small piece about how Scylla unmasks this villain on screen. Blind Date producer Chris O'Dell is quoted as saying, This was the classic sting, but we smelt a rat very early on. Here's how the villain was outed. And remember, at its peak, this show was getting something like 15 million viewers. Well, Nicola, I have to say I've got more than a big surprise for you. Because I know, I know what you're at. And it's, it's, I feel awfully deeply saddened by this, but you don't work as a temporary secretary. I know for a fact that you actually, you're an undercover journalist and you've robbed somebody of coming on a proper blind date. You work for Cosmopolitan magazine. She's a journalist, ladies and gentlemen, not a blind date at all. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? Are you, are you being serious, Phyllis? I am being serious, yeah. I am being Is she a journalist? She's a very good one, too. She's senior features writer Nicola Gill of Cosmopolitan <laughs> magazine. <laughs> oh, Nicola, how could you? Actually, I'm quite looking forward to it. I'd love to be in Cosmopolitan magazine. I'm sorry. <laughs> it begs the question why? <laughs> oh, outrageous. I'm sorry. Oh, cool. <laughs> tell us, I mean, really, there was no way you were going to fall in love with him. Tell us the truth. Have you got a boyfriend? No. You haven't? Any children? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. I mean, did you purely come on Blind Date? You obviously did, just to get the story. Yeah, it's been a fantastic time as well. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> I mean, what, what the other thing that kind of upsets me as well, because when we had the problem, because this is a show and a half, ladies and gentlemen, what with, you know, poor David's date standing him up, and, and he was prepared to go to Sky, and we did offer you to go to Nepal, which, thank goodness, you know, you didn't take up, because you got all the injections, and we actually gave you, we gave you the tickets to go to Nepal at your own leisure anyway. Are you going to give your ticket back, Nicola? I, want, I would like Paul to go with someone else. I think he's a genuinely nice guy, yeah. And I would like him to have the opportunity to go with someone else. All right, well, no, that's no, good. I would, that's I, good. Would, I would, I would. Okay. And I would have t told him that as well. Don't you feel a little bit, the least bit guilty? I mean, there's lots of, I'm sure there's lots of girls in our audience tonight, and certainly millions of girls watching at home, who would have given their right arm yeah. to be sitting on the show. You cheated one of those lovely girls out of a proper blind date. How does that make you feel? <laughs> the look says it all. I, I can't, well, what can I say? I'm sorry if that's the case. And I feel sorry because I, I would like Paul to go to Nepal. He's a really nice guy. Well, he's going anyway because he's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? I, well, I hope you write a nice article. Well, I've had a fabulous time and thank you, blind date. That's all I want to say. Now, it can't have been an easy feat 
to infiltrate the show since there were supposedly rigorous vetting stages to get through to weed out reporters and the media in the first place. Every tabloid newspaper at the time, when auditions for the show were taking place, would send reporters down there to go undercover. Personally, I think it's a ballsy move. If you don't take the risks, you don't get the results. A high-flying cosmopolitan features writer must be a job that requires constant results. But in actual fact, Nicola was not a writer for Cosmopolitan at the beginning of the deception. She, in fact, worked for the Daily Star when the plan was first put into action, posing as a temp who worked a few months and then took off to travel the world before returning to work a few more months and repeat the cycle, Nicola found herself in a drafty church hall in Guildford among a crush of enthusiastic audition-goers at the beginning of what would be an 18-month audition and selection process. Some time after the first audition, Nicola landed an interview with Cosmopolitan, using the impending big story as a lure to get the job, which she did. So this story is now yours... You're the journalist that's going to pull this yep. off. You were the picker, just to remind yep. so you. didn't need to be nope. picked. There was an extra dimension to it, which was that I had also shifted at GMTV as a freelance producer, which was filmed in the same building. So I knew people in that building. No. So I think I was so scared that somebody would come up to me and say, Hey, Nicola! When I'm actually a temp, supposed to be a temp from Guildford. So the burning question is, how much of blind date is real and how much is a fix? I was heavily steered towards one person. You were? I was, yeah. That's so disappointing to learn. <laughs> so how was the deception uncovered? Was there a mole, a leak, a little telltale? Actually, somebody who worked at Hearst, not at Cosmo, but somebody who worked at Hearst... Hearst is the parent company The parent company, yeah, had found herself at a party by sheer fluke with one of the producers of Blind Date and had basically been a bit worse for the wear and said, you know, I've got a secret. And then got progressively worse for and wear Dr. through Ian. the night and just, yeah, spilt the beans. <laughs> can I say? I, well, I hope you write a nice article. Well, I've had a fabulous time and thank you, Blind Date. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Nicola, I like you very much. I still like you because you've got that lovely smile, lovely personality. But it's just a shame that you tried to pull the wool over our eyes. But you didn't! You too, and I'm <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nicola and Paul. 